Hey guys, welcome back to episode 6 of a Let's Play series. Now as you can see, I do have a new trident, which I actually made in between episodes from the ones we already had. And in today's episode, we are going to be focusing on farming. As you can see, I have done some building in the area to make it look a lot better. So yeah guys, as you can see, there is a campsite now. I have started some work on terraforming a road. As you can see, we do have a guard tower, which I will click quickly go to for you guys now as you guys can see over here it's just a simple elevator setup we have some soul sand taking us up to the portal so we can go to the number now i'm planning on doing this in between episodes finishing it up in between episodes not really going to be building on it during the episodes as i want to finish up the entire base for that I'm also going to be mining some copper in between episodes so that I can build the roof of the guard tower and I'm going to be terraforming it. Now as you can see this area is kind of bland and I'm planning on moving the cows maybe to that mountainous area so that we're not next to that house again and it allows more space for us to terraform. So yeah I'm going down to the mines in a bit so I can show you guys the monster spawner. I'm mainly going to be covering up some holes in between episodes for the caves and maybe add digging out some area as I want to expand the main base a bit backwards. So yeah guys, I think I will cut here and I'll see you guys when. And we're back guys. Now for this farm we need to dig out a 9x9 nine nine cube basically. So a spawner, from a spawner block it can spawn up to 4 blocks away and we need to dig out an area big enough so that the skeletons can spawn, fall into water streams and be put into a trident killer. Now as you guys can see there is some gravel so it's going to be a bit hard to clear and also the regional cave system that I dug originally. Now for the spawner I will kind of just dig it out and I'll cut right here. Hey guys, we're back. I have decided to leave some of the top pieces in. I have dug out most of the bottom. As you can see there is an area here and yes it still connects onto the main tunnel. It wasn't really intended but we might as well just use it as is. Now for this design I wanted to use water streams to take the mobs into a dragon killer but I actually forgot to bring most of the materials needed for this design of a farm. So I will most likely be heading back to the surface to get more resources in a bit. But as you can see I'm just looking around for some water streams. It doesn't appear that there's any down here anymore so I think I will grab my water and maybe just head back a bit. So yeah guys, we will need water so we can build a farm. I will cut here in a bit and I will see you guys then. And we're back guys. I ha Now if you're wondering, I have brought a lot more stuff needed to build this design of the farm. Including kelp. It doesn't look like we're gonna use it but it's actually something we're going to use. And I'm mainly gonna be grabbing some water sources so we can place them. Now I want to actually place these in a way so that when the skeletons fall they get pushed into one singular direction. For example they will now be all traveling to the way the water is pointing. I'm just going to be breaking the scaffolding from earlier. And I think in one of the following episodes after this we will still be continuing the farming theme but we will most likely be going in search, for example an exploration episode, as we still need the last three wood types. So currently we only have spruce, birch and oak. We still unfortunately need to get jungle, dark oak and acacia wood. And the problem with those is basically that they are biome dependent wood types. So to find jungle wood and jungle saplings and stuff, we could either get late, uh, lucky by getting it from a wandering trader or we can find a jungle biome. Preferably to find a jungle biome is better because then we can also get bamboo and this will all lead up to a better mob farm in one of the future episodes. And for Keisha we will most likely have to be finding a desert or a savanna 
so that we can find vacation trees that spawn there. But the best part is for dark, we can basically use villagers to help us find them. For example, if you have a cartographer, you can then get a woodland uh, explorer map and you can find a woodland mansion. Now, they usually spawn in dark forests, which are the biome that dark oak trees usually spawn in. And there are also giant mushroom trees. So as you guys can see here, I have placed some water streams down and we're most likely going to be placing a water stream or a water elevator as some, as it is usually known as. And that's actually where the kelp is very handy to use. For example, I'm just going to be placing some blocks, digging up a few blocks. Now that what this will do is, this will put the mobs much higher so that they can fall, take full damage and then they're easier to kill. Because of a system that we're using, whenever they fall, they will be killed by a trident. Now, this is beneficial in some manner or ways. It's not preferable, but it's actually the best we can do since the farm is very slow down in the world. So, we are going to be digging maybe just like a few more blocks up. I'm placing some torches so that you guys can still see, otherwise it's going to be too dark for you guys. So, I don't know if this is the right layer, maybe it is. And I think this is where we'll be finishing up the farm. So now I'm just gonna have to break all the blocks I placed. And for some reason there's a zombie. But yeah guys, I'm going to be breaking some of these blocks. Just adding a few more uh, items and things here. Maybe to cover up this hole at this point would be beneficial. I actually think the zombie came through the cave opening. So yeah, I'm just going to be filling up these gaps for that the torches were placed in. And now I'm going to be grabbing the kelp so that we can place it. Now the idea of a kelp is it turns flowing water sources into water source blocks. And that's actually quite beneficial to us at this point. So that it's a lot easier to build this entire farm design. And I'm just going to be grabbing a piece of soul sand, which is in my main tree. Now after I place this, this will make bubble streams and this will push us upwards. And as you can see, I may have made a mistake by not digging out the entrance to a tunnel. So I'm going to be trying to place some blocks. And I'm just digging over a little bit so that when we place a button or something, we can make the hole the mobs will fall through and fall into the trident killer with. So they will basically fall here. Now the issue you saw with the stone is now I have to go back and actually uh, break the blocks that are placed again and fill up the gaps again. Also a note for you guys, I noticed with the water streams that they actually combined. That was not intended, it was actually a mistake. Now I don't actually fix it in this episode, maybe in like a following episode I will then fix it again as I did not actually recognize that that was not a water source, that it's a water source block instead of flowing water. Now this actually impacted the rates of the farm because the skeletons did not spawn fast enough and I did not actually know why it happened until after, after I actually looked back at the recording. And as you can see there are some few blocks and that was about it. I'm just going to be placing the last bit of kelp. I'm going to be breaking the kelp again and then we're going to be continuing. Now I'm just going to be replacing the soul sand and then this should be all we need for this bubble column. Now I do end up after this episode I will be fixing all mistakes but now that they were made in the episode and at least now we know where the skeletons will fall so now it's safe enough for us to just cover up this entire gap, place, maybe place a torch. So yeah guys now that we've placed the torches we know where, where the mobs are gonna fall so I'm mainly going to be constructing some redstone equipment, digging out this entire area a bit. Hopefully I have brought enough iron. 
Now for this gradient killer design, it's gonna be a 2x1 design instead of a one block design as I couldn't get this working. And it's actually a cool design to use to kill mobs, but we can also use the, the option of just placing a slab and killing the mobs with a sword. Now this isn't really preferable as this farm isn't really made for just like grabbing some drops every now and again. You can always get XP through this farm which actually made, makes it a much more beneficial farm. So guys, I realized I still don't have enough resources. Now luckily, I do have both of my pickaxes here, so we can always just mine some of the ores in the surrounding area. Now I'm gonna try getting back up to like the area to where the spawner originally was found. It's not actually an easy way to get there as of yet. Now I do end up fixing this issue later on by moving everything downwards again. Now this cave system is actually very complicated to travel and traverse So I end up not actually traveling a lot through this entire area I just end up breaking most of the gravel blocks and continuing with the farm So for this garden killer design, we're gonna be placing a piston and putting it on a clock style of redstone mechanism. Now I do end up changing this entire collection mechanism entirely as I realized what I did in this episode wasn't really working properly and that some of the drops would either get out or the garden would keep on getting out of the system or in this case it never actually worked. So I'm gonna be digging out a small area and as you can see unfortunately we are forced because of that water stream to work around it. So I think for now we're just gonna be placing a piece of redstone there. I'm gonna put away some of these blocks so that the inventory is a lot cleaner. And we're gonna be breaking a few more blocks. Now this is actually a very early design I made for a redstone torch clock. And it's actually a quite useful system as it doesn't actually break. It's just basically two torches, two pieces of redstone on top of each other and then a block above each torch. Now the two torches keep turning each other on and off the entire time which forces it to make a clock system basically. And the only way to turn it off is to break one torch or power one torch and eventually it will just stop working. Now as you guys can see, I'm most likely going to be testing out the tridents already. I actually found out the system did not work as I built it incorrectly. Now for those of you wondering, on Bitrock Edition, usually what happens is, whenever a person pushes a trident, that can still damage any entity, like an arrow or something. Now on Java Edition it doesn't actually happen, but for some reason it happens on Bedrock Edition. Now as you guys can see I do end up changing up this area a bit, as we need hopper minecarts to pick up items through blocks. 
as any type of block that isn't a full block that doesn't actually allow items to pass through it. I also learned that a Dragon Killer doesn't actually work when it's placed on a hopper. Now this is actually a mistake that was made, which I later on ended up fixing. I also moved the torch over so that it's at the correct torch area, so that the person is always retracted. But at this point I... Oh, we're just breaking some blocks again and placing some at the top to stop the skeletons from getting out of the farm. I'm also going to be breaking some of the torches in the area, as you guys can see. So what the torches do is they actually block the spawner from spawning mobs. And this is actually quite useful. But as you guys can see, this is the finished design. I did make some redstone spaghetti so to say and this design actually worked I just needed to place two, a full block and a stair in this area as I learned that the dragons eventually just get pushed outside of a, of a dragon killer area now this isn't very fun to fix usually because you have to kill all mobs pick up a trident again throw it again and then try and fix everything up again for some reason this was mainly dependent on the person that was the first one to be pushed. And as you guys can see now I've placed some slabs to see if it can work. For some reason the person is pushed at the same time. But yeah, it, it works only for a bit and as you guys saw the trident just fall, fell out of the system again. And broke one of the minecarts. Now as you guys can see I'm trying to solve this with a solution of placing a stair block. Now this unfortunately also did not work as there has to be some blocks underneath the stair and the upper block so that the trident doesn't glitch. But it is kind of weird so I just remade the entire hopper minecart. I'm gonna be killing the skeletons again as I need to throw the trident in again. Now as you guys can see they do actually drop a lot of items. And I'm actually a bit scared of breaking the strident, so I'm gonna try fixing it in as little time as possible. Now this is actually a system that did work until I realized the trident can pass through the gap of a stair. So what I ended up doing is just moving the stair to the other side because it actually depended on which piston was used first. So as you guys can see the trident is actually moving to the slab and not in that area but the farm is working we have some uh, nice loot already but at this point you guys can see the trident is almost into this this opening of a stair and as you can see I was not supposed to be able to pick it up but for some reason since it can pass through that small gap it did and now it's back in our inventory now I did just place it again and this is another test. It turns out because of one person is actually pushing in front of the other, it usually just pushes the trident to that opening and then the second one doesn't really push it back again. So this is actually a recurring issue which I eventually fix. As 
so yeah guys for the second last part of this episode we will just be looking around the area maybe chopping down some trees in the next episode or in between episodes and many i um, want to dig out this entire area a bit or just terraform it now half filled in some gaps i want to continue the road maybe get rid of the crops in between episodes but i want to dig out with a big enough area here so that we can build a barn so I think I will be digging out a small area which you guys will see and then I will cut until the next clip eventually so that you guys don't have to sit here through about 10 minutes worth of digging but as you can see we need to move the cows here as we're actually very close to the house and I actually wanted to make some space so I'll cut here and I'll see you guys then so yeah guys we're back I have dug out the area, I'm not going to move the crops just yet as it doesn't actually seem beneficial. We'll be taking down the sugar cane also as it's not needed at this point. Now I'm just going to be placing some placeholder blocks or like the retaining wall of this entire area. Now this doesn't actually matter how big the gap is, I just randomly placed the blocks and then eventually fixed the wall up. But I think for the main part in between episodes I will mainly be getting some more wood as I'm actually running quite low on it currently. Now I also saw that I'm running low on cobblestone so maybe in the next episode I can show you guys a simple cobblestone generator which will actually give us a lot of cobblestone. Also in between episodes I am gonna move the crops next to the barn. Now I'm just gonna be marking out this area again counting out the amount of blocks here so that we can know where the intent is to be precisely and yeah I'm maybe gonna be continuing like small build projects in between episodes I don't really want to bore you guys with this as I know building inside of an, a video can get boring for some people and we don't usually want to watch it I also don't have any way of making good time lapses in third person at this point in time so maybe in the future we will be discussing or showing off a way to do a third person camera maybe because as you guys can know currently there is a camera inside of the main game for some reason but it's only to take pictures so i don't know if that's going to be useful maybe i can create an add-on or something also that can uh, uh, work as a type of like camera account or like uh, I don't actually know how to explain it to you guys but maybe time lapse will be an option in the future once I can make an add-on that maybe works like that so yeah guys I'm just gonna be placing some of these blocks as you guys can see this is a big area and I think I will cut here and show you guys the finished product and we're back guys now this is the finished barn it's not entirely finished as it's supposed to be I need to still wait for the grass to grow fill in some sand areas here move the crops and also decorate the walls now I'm mainly gonna be taking this down in, in between episodes but I think that will be all for today and I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye